Because when it comes to education, we've got to get past this old paradigm, this outdated notion that somehow it's just money. Or somehow it's just reform but no money. And embrace what Dr. King called the, the both and philosophy. We need more money and we need more reform. When it comes to higher education, we're making college and advanced training more affordable and strengthening community colleges that are the gateway to so many with an initiative that will prepare students not only to earn a degree, but to find a job when they graduate. An initiative that will help us meet the goal I have set of leading the world in college degrees by 2020. We used to rank number one in college graduates. Now we are the middle of the pack. And since we are seeing more and more African-American and Latino youth in our population, if we are leaving them behind, we cannot achieve our goal. And America will fall further behind. And that is not a future that I accept. And that is not a future that the NAACP is willing to accept. We're creating a race to the top fund that will reward states and public school districts that adopt 21st century standards and assessments. We're creating incentives for states to promote excellent teachers and replace bad ones. Because the job of a teacher is too important for us to accept anything less than the best. We also have to explore innovative approaches, such as those being pursued here in New York City. Innovations like Bard High School Early College and Medgar Evers College Preparatory School that are challenging students to complete high school and earn a free associate's degree or college credit in just four years. And we should raise the bar when it comes to early learning programs. It's not enough just to have a babysitter. We need our young people stimulated and, and engaged and involved. And we need our, our folks involved in child development to, to understand the latest science. Today, some early learning programs are excellent, some are mediocre, and some are wasting what studies show are by far a child's most formative years. And that's why I've issued a challenge to America's governors. If you match the success of states like Pennsylvania, and develop an effective model for early learning. If you focus reform on standards and results in early learning programs, if you demonstrate how you will prepare the lowest income children to meet the highest standards of success, then you can compete for an early learning challenge grant that will help prepare all our children to enter kindergarten all ready to learn. So, so these are some of the laws we're passing. These are some of the policies we are enacting. We are busy in Washington. Folks in Congress are getting a little tuckered out. <laughs> but I'm telling, I'm telling them we, we can't rest. We got a lot of work to do. The American people are counting on us. These are some of the ways we're doing our part in government to overcome the inequities, the injustices, the barriers that still exist in our country. But all these innovative programs and expanded opportunities will not, in and of themselves, make a difference if each of us, as parents and as community leaders, fail to do our part by encouraging excellence in our children. Government programs alone won't get our children to the promised land. We need a new mindset, a new set of attitudes, because one of the most durable and destructive legacies of discrimination is the way we've internalized a sense of limitation. How so many in our community have come to expect so little from the world and from themselves. We've got to say to our children, yes, if you're African-American, the odds of growing up amid crime and gangs are higher. Yes, if you live in a poor neighborhood, you will face challenges 
that somebody in a wealthy suburb does not have to face. But that's not a reason to get bad grades. That's not a reason to cut class. That's not a reason to give up on your education and drop out of school. No one has written your destiny for you. Your destiny is in your hands. You cannot forget that. That's what we have to teach all of our children. No excuses. No excuses. You give that education, all those hardships will just make you stronger, better able to compete. Yes, we can. <laughs> to parents, to parents, we can't tell our kids to do well in school and then fail to support them when they get home. You can't just contract out parenting. For our kids to excel, we have to accept our responsibility to help them learn. That means putting away the Xbox, putting our kids to bed at a reasonable hour. It means attending those parent-teacher conferences and reading to our children and helping them with their homework. And by the way, it means we need to be there for our neighbors' sons and daughters. We need to go back to the time, back, back to the day when parents saw somebody, saw some kid fooling around. And it wasn't your child, but they'll whoop you anyway. Or at least they'll tell your parents. <laughs> their parents will. You know. <laughs> that's, that, that's the meaning of community. That's how we can reclaim the strength and the determination and the hopefulness that helped us come so far, helped us make a way out of no way. It also means pushing our children to, to set their sights a little bit higher. They might think they've got a pretty good jump shot or a pretty good flow. But our kids can't all aspire to be LeBron or Lil Wayne. I want them aspiring to be scientists and engineers, doctors and teachers, not just ballers and rappers. I want them aspiring to be a Supreme Court justice I want them aspiring to be the President of the United States of America. I want their horizons to be limitless. Don't tell them they can't do something. Don't feed our children with the sense of that somehow, because of their race, that they cannot achieve. Yes, government must be a force for opportunity. Yes, government must be a force for equality. But ultimately, if we are to be true to our past, then we also have to seize our own future each and every day. And that's what the NAACP is all about. The NAACP was not founded in search of a handout. The NAACP was not founded in search of favors. The NAACP was founded on a firm notion of justice to cash the promissory note of America that says all of our children, all God's children, deserve a fair chance in the race of life. It's a simple dream, and yet one that all too often has been denied and is still being denied to so many Americans. It's a painful thing seeing that dream denied. I remember 
visiting a Chicago school in a rough neighborhood when I was community organizer. And, and some of the children gathered around me. And I remember thinking how remarkable it was that all of these children seemed so full of hope. Despite being born into poverty, despite being delivered in some cases into addiction, despite all the obstacles they were already facing, 